of the Destiny Group Mentor School right here in beautiful downtown Stewart, Florida. Yay! <laughs> Yay. We want to start uh, the first five minutes or so with Liz giving some basics concerning the kingdom because we need foundations so that we can build thereupon. And uh, so here you come, honey. You ready? Okay. Yes, I am. Let's welcome her. Thank you. Last time we talked about how there was, there was an atmosphere in Eden. And that atmosphere created the environment yeah. that they were in. So we are, are heavenly representatives of the kingdom. And so we too now, because God restored us, reconciled us to God, yes. to him, Jesus reconciled us to God. So now we uh, carry an atmosphere of heaven. Yes. And when we show up anywhere, that's why uh, we should claim the ground that we walk on. Mm -hmm. Because yes. when we walk on that ground that God made, he is the owner. And by right of creation, he owns everything by right of creation so therefore when we step foot we as representatives of the kingdom of god when we step foot anywhere on the earth we can claim that we are here to take over that's just <laughs> it because uh we don't like the one that's ruling right now or trying to rule right that's right and uh, we know that there is a greater one and and it's the creator of god amen our god uh, and his son jesus so, so we, we find that this dominion, and somebody needs to take uh, my, my little time here, that this dominion has been established by God, mm -hmm. and by right of creation, He is the owner of everything, and He's telling us to, uh, to subdue, yes. and to, uh, to have dominion. And now we don't have dominion over people. He never told us to do that. That's right. But we have dominion over the earth. Okay. He told the man and the woman, be fruitful, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. Be fruitful, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. So in a way, because God, not in a way, but in reality, was that Adam became the first king of the earth. What does a king do? Whatever the king says, is his word, is, be, is done. So he, in a sense, was the, the first king of the earth. He had everything. But remember, there's a scripture that says, now, Revelations 1, 6. And here's what I'm going to close. Um, he, God had made us kings and priests unto God and his father or Jesus had made us kings and priests unto God unto his father to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever so we know that God has the dominion over everything including the heavens he didn't tell us that we have dominion over heaven he tells us we have dominion over earth and all that is in the earth so if we, when we really realize, see, this is just bringing you to the, all of us, to the realization of who we really are. This is a greatness from God. This is what we possess. Do you know all this technology that we have? I mean, our brain can think of this, can direct our eyes and all those thoughts that come out and we can file things. No computer has ever been or will ever be like the technology of God mm -hmm. in us. We are his greatest possession mm -hmm. and we, got, we are his greatest um, uh, creation. So when he set the atmosphere, he told us that this atmosphere that we carry, and of course Jesus got it back for us, that we carry sets the environment wherever we go. So let's, let's be bold and courageous and let 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 just let your heart believe the word of God Amen. to say that we already possessed it. Amen. So whenever we say something to somebody about the kingdom, it's gonna hit a note Amen. on them that's because good. they already know, even though they don't know. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. We are coming from the kingdom perspective. Everything we say, everything we do, is the message that Jesus preached, and that was the kingdom of God. So. It doesn't come into competition with other 
uh, moves of God because all those genuine moves of God moved us. Mm -hmm. But the kingdom is the destination. Mm -hmm. So we want to be a complement to churches and to Bible schools as we uh, move into the area of helping people discover their purpose into why they were placed on this planet. Okay, as I said, we're in week number four. Hopefully you had a chance to get your study sheet from the website. All you got to do is download it. And I do all the work for you. Look. Hmm? Such a guy. We're going to have fun. And we are having fun. You know, uh, we've already shared, of course, week number one, we were just celebrating the launch of the school. And then week number two, we were sharing an overview concerning purpose and vision to kind of get us started. And in fact, if you want to know the truth, this whole 12-week class is going to be somewhat of a skimming the top overview of other classes that we'll have in days to come. So I'm kind of just giving you an overview of what you can expect in the Destiny Group Mentor School. It's going to be good. So second week, we talked about purpose. You'll start noticing there's a lot of words beginning with P here. We shared about purpose. And then last week, we talked about protocol. So tonight, get your pen and paper ready. We're going to talk about the path of progress. Because deep down, that's really what we all want to do. But there are no shortcuts. Amen. You, you must uh, follow the protocol of character and truly progressing. And sometimes that means you don't feel like you're getting anywhere. But you are. Because God's doing a lot of work in us before he puts us through. I want to just say something to you that I really want you to think about for a minute because it sounds simple, but I believe it's profound. And I put it there on your sheet. God purposed you to be there before you were here. God purposed you to be there before you were here. Well, where is there? It's where you want to go. And I'm not just talking about going to heaven. I'm talking about where you really in your heart of hearts purpose to accomplish on the earth. So let me say that again. God purposed you to be there before you were here. So he made a way. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. He made a way. And that way is absolute. Yes. It's done. All we got to do is cooperate with it. Amen. So wherever you feel like there is, he's already got you there. Mm -hmm. Even before you were here. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. That's how sure his kingdom government is. So we're going to talk about the path of progress. Now, a scripture you're very familiar with, most of you and a lot of you here, is Jeremiah 1.5. But before you preach the sermon for me in your own mind, how many of you will let me share? <laughs> Amen. Because we can, I know this one. <laughs> but God can give us a fresh revelation. It says in Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed thee in what? the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, this is King James, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet where? To the nations. Now we kind of skip through that and get a lot of great messages out of it, but something just jumped out at me uh, fresh today. And that is, there's a lot of befores there. There's three befores. And we talk a lot about, you know, even before I came out of my mother's womb, he knew me. But did you see what he just said there? Before you were even formed. In other words, before you were even in your mother's womb. I knew you. Wow. Now, wait a second. Is that hitting you like it hit me? 
before you were even in your mother's womb. Before there was a gleam in your mama and papa's eye. <laughs> when he was. He says, I knew you. When he was, we were. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning that who you are goes before what you see. Who you are goes before you were even formed in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Who you are was actually in God's mind before he even brought you to the planet through the process of birth right. or pregnancy. Before you were formed, you were designed. I, I want to challenge you. Hallelujah. I got challenged, so you might as well be challenged too. Amen. <laughs> God cut your path in the waters of creation before he even formed you. God cut your path in the waters of creation before he even formed you. What in the world does that mean, Dr. Rick? Look at this, Isaiah 43, verse 16. Now get this. I'm excited over it. Thus says the Lord, which maketh a way where? In the sea. In the sea. Hmm. And a path. path in the mighty waters. Now, normally you would think he would say, he makes a way in the woods. <laughs> or he, he makes a path on a dirt road. But he makes a point to say he makes a way, look at that, in the sea, in the sea well, and a path that? in the mighty waters. Mm -hmm. We oftentimes think of a path as a road lined with trees and we sing, I'm walking with Jesus. Okay. But here you can see a pathway, a pathway is designed to direct our feet. So path in the Greek and Hebrew is defined as really your DNA. Mm. Wow. Your real DNA. He DNA'd you before he formed you mm. in his image. Mm. <laughs> so path really is the design that directs your feet or your goings or your development, or you could say your DNA. So your DNA, we're not just talking about your physical DNA, we're talking about your spiritual DNA. Right. Amen? Amen? So he designed you, that's why he says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's literally our DNA. This is why when he says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. <laughs> and before you came as forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. Before you even came out, I sanctified you. And I, what? Ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. Speaking to Jeremiah, of course. So before we were formed, we were designed. I just said it again because I really wanted to sink in. <clears throat> wow. It says in Isaiah 43 and 19, Behold, I do a new thing, making a way in the wilderness. So, God opens something. Liz talked about an open heaven. It's almost like she knew what I was going to talk about. <laughs> but he, he opens something, but we think of it conventionally. God opened a door, but we want him to open a conventional door. God wants to open doors that the world hasn't even heard of yet. <laughs> God is going to cause you to be the pioneer of a new DNA in the earth. To call those things that what? Be not as though they were, as we said last week. So feet are set in a prophetic path. 
That's why Hebrews 12, 13, as we says, make straight the paths for your feet. In other words, get straightened out. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the beginning, the Spirit hovered. Isn't that what the word says? Yes. The Spirit hovered over the face of the waters. Over the face of the what? The waters. The waters. And waited on the word. Yes. Wow. And when God spoke the word, whoo, this gives me goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> the Spirit of God dove down into the waters and DNA creation. Wow. DNA creation. Wow, somebody. Amen. Amen. At the word, the Holy Spirit was the creative force yes. Yes. in cutting the DNA in the waters. Mm -hmm. How much, my, my wife knows all this stuff. How much water are we? Oh, it's about 80%. 80% water. water. Well, Sometimes I look like maybe 90%. Be, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're about 80% water. Um, and there, and we're, there's so much scripture, we can't get into it tonight, but about living water. Why do we have living water? What does that mean? Is it just kind of make us feel good bubbly? No, it means that our DNA has been renewed yeah. with the life of his DNA. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. So the path is hidden. There's, there's a couple of scriptures. In fact, uh, we might see another one in here. Yeah, skip down a little bit. Can we skip down? Is that all right? Is it legal? I mean, we're going to get arrested. Okay. Let's get down to point C of, of uh, number two. And, and look there. A path, as I said, is not conventional thinking. But will lead over waters. And what does that mean? Look at Psalm 77 and verse 19. Thy way is in the where? Sea. The sea. And thy path in the great waters. And thy footsteps are not known. Wow. Why? Because at Adam's transgression, things got crooked. At Adam's transgression, water came where water wasn't. Mountains got moved where mountains weren't. Amen. Crooked places came. Nature got affected. By the way, we don't we're not we don't need to talk about global warming. It's global groaning. <laughs> yeah, it is. Amen. Yeah, All creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God that have the DNA. Yes. <laughs> this is why you change things everywhere you go. Because you have a representation of the original DNA that was cut in the waters. So deep is calling to the deep of you Amen. to bring forth creativity. Amen. Whoa. 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 Say that again. Deep, the deep of God is calling to the deep of you to bring forth creativity. That's the treasure that's in you that we talk about all the yes. time. Yes. Deep of you. Is, the deep of God is calling to the deep of you. And that's your belly. That's the water spouse, the birthing of creativity. Now, here's another example of what we're talking about. Because we have never really investigated water. Except Liz, she, she investigates the best water. <laughs> but I'm talking about spiritual water, okay? That affects the physical water. You see that picture over here? And I'll just show it on here. The picture of Jesus walking on the water. You all know that story, don't you? Yes. He came walking on the water, John 6, 16 through 20. And when his disciples saw him, they thought he was a ghost. And the question has to be asked, and I used to ask it for years, and I couldn't get an answer, was why did he come walking on the water? <laughs> He's not a show-off. <laughs> he didn't just come walking on the water to produce a movie, you know, or a, or a scene or a production. So... Then I began to read about how God moves on the waters. Yeah. And Jesus, I get this, Jesus had already been baptized by John. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does baptism represent? Death, Death burial, burial, and what else? Resurrection. Resurrection. 
he had already defeated the grave represented by the waters in principle before he did it in action. He had already won yes, over the seas. He had already in principle because he was obedient in baptism. He was already ready. Already ready? <laughs> he was already able to walk on top of the grave in principle. You know what he invited Peter out to do? Walk in resurrection life with me. Come on somebody. Amen. Amen. He was inviting Peter to come out of the boat. And as long as you look at me, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. As long as you look at me, you'll walk on the grave with me in principle. Mm -hmm. But when Peter started noticing the old paradigm and the old conventional thinking of you sink in water mm -hmm. and got his eyes off of Jesus, mm -hmm. then he began to sink. But Jesus lifted him out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was the one that got out of the boat. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is why... When Jesus was asleep in the boat, you remember that? Mm -hmm. yes. The disciples woke him up in the storm because he didn't just come walking on calm seas. Mm -hmm. It says in the scripture there in John that he came in the raging storm. And I kind of picture Jesus was strolling. Look at this. He was just kind of, hey guys, what's up? Mm -hmm. He wasn't even, because he had already defeated the, the storm. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> he is the way. Mm -hmm. He <laughs> is the truth. He is the life. Amen? Amen. That's why he came walking on the water. He was actually demonstrating. Everybody say demonstrating. demonstrating. He was demonstrating a kingdom government principle. principle. Uh -huh. Now that's not all. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. How about you? Yeah, amen. The word, see there in point two and, and A. The word reveals the path only seen by purpose. That's why somebody can read the same Bible yeah. and not get it. Mm -hmm. Because they're not reading it according to understanding the path of purpose. There are a lot of people who know more scripture than you, but they don't know God. Mm -hmm. yeah. true. That's true. Have you met them? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, the word reveals the path only seen by purpose but still needs to be cut or plowed. Mm -hmm. When we say, Lord, direct my steps and on my path, and we think of he's already got it paved <laughs> with <laughs> trees and sunshine, and oh. we just sing hallelujah, you know, and we just walk our way with Jesus. But in reality, you are pioneering the path. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you ready the path is already there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. But you just have to cut the brush away. You just have to rediscover it. You and I, by living out the government of the kingdom, yes. we are bringing the kingdom government to the earth through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is why it says in Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, no man or woman having put their hand to the plow and looking where? Backwards. Backwards. Is fit for the kingdom of God. Why? It's not because he is saying, therefore, you look back, you're out. No, he's not saying it that way. He's saying you're not fit for it because you can't mow forward looking back. That's all he's saying. Why? Because you've got a plow in your hand. And a plow breaks up the ground. So you've got the plow of kingdom government. Come on, somebody. Amen or something. Amen. You've got the plow of kingdom government and his authority in your hand. And you're cutting a new path. And not everybody's going to like you. Amen. Not everybody's going to appreciate it. And, you know, we're not warring against flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. But against principalities and powers. You're not against people. But it's like the agendas that are at work in hidden places behind some of the ideas. So we've got to be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves, and we've got to know strategy by the Holy Spirit on how to cut this path without mowing down people. Oh, wow. What is the first thing the enemy will try to do? He'll try to get you looking back. Yeah. He'll try to get you remembering something you did. Try to get you to keep looking over your shoulder. Mm. Try to get you to think you failed. Right. 
but he's a liar. Okay. The path, point three, brings us to gates and doors. Whenever you start plowing and start meaning business with opening up the kingdom into the world, mm -hmm. he will bring you before great men. Amen. He will bring you before gates and doors. Not all of them will like you either. Mm -hmm. But the path brings us to gates and doors. And this is what I wanted to kind of wrap it up tonight with uh, to kind of bring us to next week. Gates and doors are defined as paradigms and levels. The path will always lead you to a gate and a door. Your DNA has been designed by God to go through some awesome gates and awesome doors. He's already had you go through them before you got here. He's already got you there before he brought you here. Yes. Amen. Do you believe it? That's something we ought to just meditate on. Most think of doors as opportunity, <laughs> as opportunity to be promoted or gain success. But you got to watch out about opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even a good opportunity can't, can't take the place of a God opportunity. Yes. Amen? Amen? So let's look at this. Doors first represent checkpoints. Transition and change. I'm talking kingdom doors. Mm -hmm. Doors opened by God. A door God opens and no man can shut. Amen. Will always take you through checkpoints, transition, and paradigm change. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to go through. Yeah, you have to really allow, because let me, let me say this. Now you might want to write this down. I might have it on your sheet. But before you go through a door, a door will go through you. Before you go through a door, a door will process you. In other words, God's not going to take an old you into a new place. Oh. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, you don't that's waltz that. through the door. Mm -hmm. When you go through the door, you'll go through a checkpoint, transition, and change in yourself before you change where you're going to. Mm -hmm. And that's because God loves us. The word door has is from the Greek word thura. Or when we cut got our word through. So every door has a threshold, right? Mm -hmm. And when we talk kingdom government, a threshold will thresh and hold you. Until you get clean. It has to. It has to. Yeah, that's where you get the wheat and the terry from. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. This is why God does that because he loves us. God opens access. Everybody say access. access. He opens access to get you in places you thought was impossible. Mm -hmm. But what got you in there was the DNA he put in you before yeah. you were born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't just happen. Mm -hmm. No. They were an overnight success. No, they weren't. They were a from the beginning success, if it was yeah, God's success. So God opens access to get you in places you thought impossible. You know, the first place he got us into that it seemed impossible was the Holy of Holies. Wow. Wow, yes. He did, because he ripped the veil. He ripped the veil. This is what God's going to bring you to. And I declare this over you and over all of you. Not because I'm doing it in my own authority, but I'm doing it in the name of our king. Amen. The king decrees it. We simply proclaim it. God is going to get you into realms, borders, spheres, territories, gates, doors, and windows. Hallelujah. Yes, you. You. Me, we ain't seen nothing yet, folks. I'm yeah. telling you, don't get distracted by what people are, the narrative you're hearing out there. Mm -hmm. It's not the way things really are. We are now seeing the light shine brighter than ever concerning the kingdom of God. We are the city set on a hill. Yes. 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 
and the light is effectively changing the landscape. Why? Because now I can speak to a mountain and say, be removed. Yeah. Why? Because you got moved out of place, yes. and now I'm removing you back where you go, out of my way. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In God, in God. Yes, yes, yes. You and I have the DNA of the original blueprint. Yes, we do. And every day we're Jesus. discovering more and more and more who that is, yes. and it's, it can scare you at times. Yeah. You're saying, oh, really? That's me? Mm -hmm. And then about the time you get adjusted to it, God shows you some more. And that's the plow. Amen. Amen. So God opens access in realms. What are realms? You see there on your sheet? Mm -hmm. I wrote it for you. Mm -hmm. Realms are dimensions of rule. Mm -hmm. God's going to get you into dimensions of rule. Meaning, you don't need to walk in with your head down. You'll walk in as a representative of royalty. Oh, yes. Come on, somebody. Yeah, we are. You'll we walk are. in as a representation of the kingdom of God. And you can find, I put the scriptures there because time is getting away from us. I want you to do that study on your own. Borders, after we see realms are dimension, borders are distinction of boundaries. In other words, you begin to know your measure. I'm not reaching out past my measure. I'm walking in my measure. We'll get more into that in weeks to come. Other classes to come as well. You see on your sheet there, after I've got the dimensions and the distinction, then I understand the spheres. That is my, uh, that's my definition of influence. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that there's certain people who like hanging around with you. Mm -hmm. You'll notice there's certain people who actually don't like you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it seems like there's no middle ground. <laughs> I don't know if you found that. Be, you sound, <laughs> it's like there's no middle ground. They don't just kind of like you. Right. When you're really walking in kingdom authority, they either really like you or they don't like you at all. And sometimes it's in the religious world. Yeah. So, you know, you have to begin to say, this isn't about me. I'm not going to take it personal. I'm just a representation of the, of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. I'm here as an ambassador on an assignment. Yeah. So God will bring you into realms, borders, spheres of influence, and give you territories. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. Anybody ready to take ground? Yes, we are. Amen. Yes. Oh, I don't, I don't think we can do that, Dr. Rick. Can we actually do that? Yes, it's called taking dominion. Yes. Amen. Yes, dominion. We walk into some places as though we just feel like we're just thankful they let us in there. When they're just thankful you came. <laughs> Why? Not because of you, but because you represent the authority of a king. Yes, yes. The king. Yes. So you see there, I put the little next to realm, borders, spheres, and territories. I put height, depth, length, and breadth. It says in Ephesians 3.18, right there, I got the scripture for you, that you might comprehend with all saints the height, the depth, the length, the breadth, and to know the love of God that surpasses all your current understanding. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. God is getting you into those realms because he had you there before you were born. God's getting you into borders because he had you already in that measure before you knew it. Mm -hmm. He's got you in the spheres of influence and territories to take dominion for him. Yes. Amen. Not for your empire, but for his kingdom. Yes, amen. You begin to learn how to co-labor without intimidation. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, yes. Yeah. You know, I've, I've never seen myself. a true visionary that's ever intimidated by another visionary. Mm -hmm. no. They're usually ignited by each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's just someone who hasn't got their own vision that is intimidated by a visionary. Yeah. And usually puts them down. Mm -hmm. So, because we're in, going into realms, do you all receive that? Yes, amen. Greater borders, greater spheres. Yes. Give me this territory, dear God. Yes. Increase my territory. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to be representations of gates. Gates are always in, the, in the, the word of God. When it talks about spiritual things, gates always represent governmental outer entry. Mm -hmm. Gates represent governments. Mm -hmm. Doors represent direct inner entry. Mm -hmm. Gates are outside the city, 
leading in. Yeah. Doors are inside the house <laughs> going to rooms. Mm. Mm. This is why this, this is why Jesus didn't say I stand at the gate and knock. Mm. I stand at intimacy and knock. Yeah, <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And windows. Windows discern and define prophetic vision. You don't crawl through windows. You walk through doors. Mm -hmm. Jesus had a word for those who try to crawl through windows. Mm -hmm. Thieves and robbers. Yeah. But you, you look through windows. Look through windows. So you God will see. cause you to look through windows yes. before you walk through doors. And this is why one of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament is Psalm 24 and 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors. And what will happen? The King of glory shall come in. What is happening? You as his gates, you as his doors, going through gates, going through doors, begin to open the way for the King to come back into the earth and eventually culminate his kingdom. Yeah.